Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. It is nine o'clock, which means it's time for a Talk Magic. And I am here with somebody I have so much respect for. He was the winner of the Creator of the Year. His production company uh, is just incredible. He won Product of the Year for Magnet Zero. He is an unbelievable performer and magician and creator and one of the nicest guys in Magic. He is... Henry Harrius. Hey, Henry, how you doing? Hi, Craig. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Exciting. I'm excited. I'm excited that I, I know how busy you are. I know how, right. how much you've got going on. So honestly, thank you so much for finding time to, to jump on this interview with me. I really appreciate it. Welcome. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to be here. <laughs> it's amazing. And you know that I've been a big fan of, of your material for a very, very long time. And I can do not, that. But yeah, I, I think you're amazing. And, and we'll talk about this later on, but your material, Henry, is so commercial. It's so commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Which is yeah. so important these days. But a lot of people think of you as just this cube guy, but you've been in magic pretty much your whole life. So yeah. would it be okay if we just start at the very beginning? We talk about your origin story and how you got into magic and the things that you've done before Henry Harrius presents, because your production right. company is only kind of in the last few years, but you've done a lot more before that. Um, right. When did you get into magic, Henry? I can do magic around maybe when I was eight, seven or eight. Yeah. And I was a very boring uh, not talkative, like super quiet kid, like long time ago when I was around seven or eight. I don't even smile, <laughs> like when I was like so little. And I have no interest like on anything. I don't like basketball. I don't like any other things. But until I uh, saw David Copperfield's TV special, Right, I think every one of us have seen it. And I've, that was the first time I know about magic. And I was like, wow, that is magic. And I would like, soup, like, like fall in love with that. And then I realized it is something that we could learn, right? I, I saw it from a book, from, from like, right. And my auntie, bought me a like a magic set actually how i started i think every magician would start like same way right <laughs> they go to david copperfield and they have a magic set yeah and i practice everyone every tricks in there and i perform them to my families friends and that's how i started yeah and I, I remember the very first trick that i feel like wow that is like a super invincible trick like <laughs> super amazing you know the toothpick right where you balance it like this and it would dance itself that is like my like one of my very first tricks i still remember when i was uh primary school right i do this and my classmates just freak out they're like what <laughs> <laughs> and it's so practical there's no way they could know the method like if you know how it's done it's like super classic trick but it's like one of the greatest tricks, yeah. And that's how I started, yeah. And then later, um, I think after a few years, uh, I learned that my, um, how should I say it? Uh, he, he was, he, he's my uh, uncle's godson. Okay. And he's from, he's from Macau. And back then he was a very famous magician in Macau. His name is uh, Antonio Almeida. Uh, you probably never heard of him because it's like more famous in, in Asia and Macau. And one day uh, he went to my home and to have a dinner, to have dinner. I re still remember my mom told me, hey, there will be a magician coming to your home. And I was like very excited. And I still remember he, he, he looks like, um, like very mysterious, right? But the way he talks, is like very attractive. It's hard to explain. It's like almost like he could um, 
he's very good at one thing is to, to use his language to uh, convince people like a Jedi mind trick <laughs> anyway. But uh, I still remember he performed a coin trick, like very classic uh, David Roth style thing. And he's very good with that beautiful hands, beautiful sleight of hand. I, and my, from my memory, I still remember the coin vanishes itself. And there's one uh, scene I remember for a very long time. And I realized it's a false memory. I remember he made the coin vanish and he do this. He hit his head and the coin fall out from his ear. And that is like, wow, it's, it's to remember that, that, that uh, image. But now I know it's a false memory because he's actually doing this, right? Mm. But I don't know why I have a memory to do this. <laughs> and, and that is the moment I, I remember for a long time because that is to me, that is real magic. That's the moment of wow, coin to vanish, right? Because the more you, you learn about magic, right? The, the less you will feel amazing about those things yeah and that's how it started and, and after that I, I i learned many things from uh, him I, I see him as my as my mentor and yeah it's pretty much how i started <laughs> fantastic and did you i mean i've known you as a full-time performer for a very very long yeah. time did you right. ever have like a normal job or did you did you finish education and then go straight into performance I, yeah, I finished my education and then go straight to performance. Wow. Um, I, I studied uh, social work, social work, right. And when I graduated, I feel like I don't really want to be a social worker. <laughs> I, it's like I have no passion on that. And back then I, I was helping like a friend to be his assistant. So I kind of know how a professional magician, how would it work to, to become the one like that? And I talked to my family, I talked to my mom. I said, I actually want to try to be a, a full-time magician. And the first, uh, like, like at first, my mom really doesn't like it. He could, uh, she could support me uh, as a, as her interest, right? Magic as an interest, but not like full-time work. But the next day, uh, she like had a new thinking. He, she said, actually, if you are not interested in social work, you will never be a good social worker, right? But if you're interested in magic, you could be a good magician, but you can do something related to social work. And that would be even better than being a full-time social worker. So, and then I just, I think it's around 2012, I think. Yeah, 2012. Like, that was the time I really tried to start to become a full-time magician. But that was super tough, <laughs> super tough time. Like, yeah. you know, everyone, when, when they begin, it's the hardest time. Yeah. And how did you build, you know, you've, you've decided to become a full-time magician. How did yeah. you go from kind of jumping into that to to because now you perform at like the highest profile events you perform right. on the biggest stages um yeah. you know everybody wants to book henry harrius outside <laughs> of everything that you do in the community you are a very successful right. magician how did you go from how did you go from right. where we are right now you know you've decided not to right. be a social worker to there where was that was there something that you did where you can say actually that really helped or right um it took a long time but um i always think like that because if i could go back in time and taught myself how to be a full-time magician i should be so much better now <laughs> you know what i mean right <laughs> because we know lots of small tips uh, but anyway like when i just started uh basically i don't even know how to start and because no one know about me. Uh, no one know I do magic. Basically, it's so, super tough. It's even, I would say I'm good at magic, but doesn't mean I could be a good full-time performer, right? Because to be a full-time performer, uh, like, it, like you're good at magic, but this is basic. It's a must, right? It's a must. But more about marketing, promoting, and how you build up your brand, 
Yeah. So it took me a long time to actually understand that. So like there's a friend、uh, recently asked me about advice, how to be a full-time magician. I told him, first of all, spend some money to take a good profile picture. Yeah. Because if you don't do that, like after eight years, you will laugh at yourself. Why don't I? Why didn't I do that? Right? It's so important. A good profile picture, a good business card, a good website. All these are money, and it's unavoidable. One day you will do that. Why not do it earlier? Right? And、uh, what else? Yeah, business card, a, a, a good Facebook page. This is free, right? You must do that, right? So. Yeah, you need to spend some money on these things. Another thing is that, of course, you need to have a good act, a good stage act, a good close-up set. But of course, again, it takes time to actually build a good act for yourself. So I think for the at the beginning, you、uh, you need to really try to perform more. Like no matter it's a free show, I think.、Uh, We we should do it like without money if you have a chance if you just begin right because、um, of course you 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 don't want to do it like oh、uh, it's free yeah it's a, it's free lunch you don't want to do it like that but more like oh、uh, I could do it free for you but maybe you can I don't know you can put me on the poster blah 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 make it like sound good. But it re- really help you a lot because the more you perform, the better you will be, and the more you, no matter is paid or not,、uh, voluntary work or whatever. Once you're on stage,、uh, people will know you, and they may book you next time. But at least they know about you. If you just stay at home and sit like this, nothing would happen. The hardest part for for magician is most of them are too lazy. I would say, including me. I'm lazy. I would say that, <laughs> but、um, I think the key point is you need to make things happen, like make things happen, like keep rolling. If you just stop there, one hundred percent, nothing would happen. But like, like I don't know, like maybe a year or two, you started your YouTube channel. I think that would like that's like rolling stone. Something else happening, right?、Yeah. No matter what that is, it could be you filming some great Instagram video. It could be you、um, filming a live performance, like a short video posted on Instagram. It could be anything, but you need to do something to keep things rolling. Otherwise, you would nothing would happen. You would just sit here, and yeah, nothing would change. <laughs> That's the hardest part. That's fantastic advice. And when you first started, were you primarily doing close up,、um, or 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 did yes, to, yeah, so. When I just yeah, for like ten plus years, I've been just doing close up magic. I've been doing casual close up magic for a long time, like for my friends. And、um, when I go pro, ah、uh, yeah, at the beginning I also start with close up magic, like in some wedding gigs and yeah. But I really recommend everyone if they just started, you should push yourself on stage, right. Because,、um, you know, on stage is a totally different thing. If you're just thinking something for like two seconds, on stage it feels like ten seconds. It will look super ugly. For example, if you said something、uh, like like fillers, if your script are not well polished, it will look terrible. It look really terrible on stage. Close up is better because it's like casual, right? We're talking, right? Casually doing something. It could be a little bit more casual, but on stage, everything needs to be well planned, like which music you're using, when you want to play it,、um, the positioning on everything, where you're going to walk, what's your body language, every small detail. You need to think about that. But after. You've been on stage for a long time, and then you go back to close-up magic. It's going to help you a lot for the close-up. If I knew this, <laughs> I would such, I would go back in time, talk to myself, like like maybe fifteen years of myself. I said, "Hey Henry, do some more stage show, right?" <laughs> I really regret I didn't do a lot back then. Otherwise, I would be a lot better now. <laughs>
Yeah, that is, that is fantastic advice. And have you got any, I think that the big reason a lot of magicians struggle to move onto stage is they, they get really nervous about it. There's a big difference between performing to a few hundred people on stage and yeah. three or four people in a group. Have you got any advice on, I mean, you've performed on some of the biggest stages in the world. Yes. Have you got any advice on dealing with nerves? Um, I think, first of all, you need to have some good materials that you are really confident about that. If those are things that you are not quite sure, you will feel nervous. But if, if it's a trick that you've been performing for a long time, you've tried many times and you know, it's not going to fail, right? <laughs> it's going to work for 100% working, right? And then it will give you confidence. So for me, I think good materials will help you, right? Find some strong materials, good materials, some like something that everyone is doing and it, you feel like it's going to work. And it would help a lot to give you confidence. Another thing is that... Uh, I think we all should spend some time to make ourselves look good. When you look good, you feel good on stage. Imagine if I didn't shave, right? I, I feel embarrassing, right? No, no, for me, for me, for me, for me, for me. For me, I, it's impossible, right? I would feel like, oh my God, damn, I forgot to do that, right? You make sure you look good. When you look good, you have the confidence. And yeah. It's like you like the look of yourself. You have good uh, clothing, good shoes, good, good, good watches. And yeah, I, you know, I even do makeup. You know, now I, I've done my makeup, you know. <laughs> even on stage, I would do my makeup or, or like close up, I would do my makeup for sure because it makes me look better and give me more confidence. And it's very important, I think as a full-time magician, part of your job is to make yourself look good, right? That's great advice. I think that's, that's yeah, that's the main point, yeah. And would you would you put makeup on and go to that extreme with close-up magic as well, or do you think that's advice that's really mainly for stage? You, you mean makeup? Uh, sorry, I didn't uh, you know, that. We get, you, know uh, um, you talked about putting makeup on before you go on stage. Oh. Is that something you do before a close-up performance as well? Yeah, even close up. Even I meet my clients, I do that because I look very tired when <laughs> I make up. That's another <laughs> bad thing about myself. Yeah, I look very tired and I'm black. Yeah, yeah, I struggle thing. No good. <laughs> so another good advice is I think we need to be healthy. That's very important. And I was just, it took me a long time to understand that and tried myself to uh, do more sports running, jogging, gym, it's very important because as magicians, we always like sleep very late, even myself, <laughs> right? And it's not good. I recently, I realized without a good body, it's impossible to do a good show. Mm. Yeah. That's my, that's okay. what I feel like these years. Well, that, anyway. <laughs> no, that's great advice. I mean, obviously, you know, there's, there's think, very few people that are as successful as you. So th this, this is really valuable advice. It really is. I think you talk about similar thing in your, in your channel as well. I think I so. Yeah. Yeah. Drink more water or, or eat healthy drink before water, the show. Yeah, that's healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's yeah, so exactly. I won't, I usually don't eat before I perform. I mean, not, not like right before, like not like a few hours before I would not eat because if I eat something, like I would be sleepy. <laughs> so it keeps me like, yeah. There's nothing worse than being on stage and having that bloated feeling where you're you're trying to be high energy and you've just eaten and it's 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 not great. Yeah. Yeah. Totally, totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> so so let me ask you a question. You've so your career's going great. You, you started doing close-up. You transitioned into stage. You're now a full-time <laughs> magician. Um, yeah. At some point, you entered FISM, didn't you? And did remarkably. Oh, yes. And you did remarkably well. I have a few questions about that. The, one of the main yeah. questions is, how important do you think it was? 
because you won at FISM, didn't you? I'm, I'm correct in saying yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. so how important was it to win at FISM to catapult your career? Was that, and what made you decide to enter FISM? Had you done other competitions beforehand or was it just, hey, I'm going to enter the world championships? You know? <laughs> You know, it's funny because it was back then, like I told you, like I started full time 2012, right? Mm -hmm. Back then, I don't have a lot of chance to perform. And I start thinking, okay, maybe it's only because there's nothing else I can do. <laughs> so I start working for uh, my ad for um, competition. Back then, it's like only the close up Hong Kong close up competition, right? The official one in Hong Kong. And I used, I spent like uh, maybe half year, more than half year. I think around one, yeah, around one year to prepare the act. And actually I have been to that competition a few years before that, like around 2008, I think, 2008. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty terrible. <laughs> and but after that, I, I feel like, oh, maybe I need some longer time to um, learn more and and, and like becomes a better me and then I go to the competition and that would be better. And then I feel like, oh, 2013, it's about time to do that because I just go full time. I don't have a lot of jobs and yeah. So I spent a long time to think about creating an act for myself. And then I won the champion uh, for that competition in Hong Kong and then I represent Hong Kong for the FISM Asia, the AMA, uh, FISM Asia, I think I got second prize. Yeah. But that, in there, there are a lot of stories about the competitions, right? You know, I don't know if you have heard of Rubik's Nightmare. You, you know about Rubik's Nightmare? I know, I, I don't know the full story. I know it's- Right. But please share yeah. it. Go ahead. Yeah, maybe I, I, I will share like briefly, like, because it's not so important now. Um, back then, like Rubik's Nightmare is like my creation, but not pe my, many people know about that because my name was not on the DVD. And when I uh, went to some Asia, you know, Sean Farqua was a, uh, a judge and Charming Choi and some others. And because the Rubik's Nightmare is like part of my main, main, main act in, in, in my act, the main show in my act. I already modified a little bit so it doesn't look like the, the original version, which is all created by me. You know, you know the one in Rubik's Dream, right? That is yeah. the one. And I got second prize. And after that, I, I talked to Charming Choi. And Charming Choi said, no, no, like I told him, oh, actually, you know, that part is Rubik's Nightmare is my creation. And he was like, what? No way. Because some marks are deducted because they don't know this is my creation. Oh, right? nice. And you know, Sean Fanqua was a judge in another TV program that uh, uh, Michael Lamb have done a uh, it's like competitor in there and he performed the uh, Rubik's Nightmare. So kind of Sean Fang kind of thought, oh, this this is something from Michael. So yeah, it, it really affects a lot um, about about my act. But finally, it I know it yeah, like when we went to the FISM stage and it went well and I got an award. And it's good because after that the world knows about the story, they know who created this. And that's it. That's the story. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I want to ask questions about that. But first of all, as we're on the subject of competitions, you've done phenomenally well in every competition you've entered. Right. Do you have any advice for people that are entering competitions as to how to make their act unique? And, 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 and right. you know, because, you know, it's, it's something that you've done so well. And a lot of people, a lot of Yes. Yeah. Um, I could go very detailed, but I think the key points is that I think in every competition, you are proving something. You're proving your philosophy about magic. Like my point of view about magic is that 
I think uh, I want my magic to be super amazing. I love anything that is amazing because, you know, I started because of David Copperfield. You know, David Copperfield, all his magic is like <laughs> super crazily amazing. Right? Even now you watch it back, it's still super crazy. So I want my magic to be super strong. It has to be very strong. That's my philosophy. So for some other people, maybe not. Maybe he wants to be like funny. He wants to be uh, like, I want it to be meaningful, right? I want it to be funny. So it could be, I want it to be touching. It could be anything, right? But it's like proving something. It's like proving your point of view on magic. So, and if you, uh, let's say Shinlim, right? Shinlim, you know, he's been in the committee for a long time. And back then, nobody think black art is a good thing, right? Back then. And what I saw is that he is proving that it works. It's going to work. And he proves <laughs> to everyone and it, it even becomes a trend, right? So he got champion, right? Of this uh, AGT, full us everything, right? And that is the act. And I kind of feel like, yeah, he's proving his point of view. And he's telling you it works. It's, it will work. It's a good piece of magic. So, yeah, that's what he's proving. And for me, I'm proving like my point of view on magic. I want everything to be uh, amazing. And that's, my, that's a key point. So maybe for, for, for others, they need to have something. Like you need to have a point of view on your magic. What you want your magic to be. Right. So I think that's very important. Another thing would be because it's a, it's a magic competition, right? So you are actually performing for magicians. And what I mean is it, 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 it's, it's not like you need to do some magicians fuller, but you need to think um, for me to fool them is for sure because your audience is is magicians. Magic only works when you fool the audience. Otherwise, it's not magic. So in this context, you need to fool them. That's basic. Another thing, it could be a new presentation of an old thing. It could be a new presentation of an old thing. I don't know. I have a friend. Uh, his competition act is about uh, cups and balls. But it's talking about a story about three little pigs, <laughs> like three houses. It's so super funny it's like one of them they open the cup and there's a, a, a needle <laughs> anyway uh, so that's a new presentation on an old thing and it's good and the third way is to have something completely new completely uh, a new breakthrough in magic for example you know my physm act i have a mosaic you know back then no one does any magic with cute mosaic and that's to the judges or to the audience. It's something completely new. And the effect is that I take one of those, uh, because it's mini cubes, mini cubes. It's a big mosaic. I take one of the pieces and I let the audience to mix it. And then I ask them to name any person. Let's say they name Steve Jobs. And then I take the cloth with music and a rubbing and it changes to the face of Steve Jobs. But there's still a hole there, right? And I said, wait, but there's still one piece missing. And then with no switches, I just take the cube that they just mixed and I push it in like that and it fits the whole picture. And that's the ending of my act. And this, like this thing, as an example, it's something completely new, but it also fooling. So you've got two factors here already, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think these three things are very important like new presentation, something completely new, or, or f like a, it's a magician fooler. It has to be like one, one factor or two or even three. And then it, that is the indicator that it means this is something you should put in the act. Like, imagine if I go to, go to FISA and perform just a standard ambitious card, it's not going to work, right? Because everyone knows you are doing a double lift, right? But this is only in the context of comp magic competition. Yeah. Because everyone is a magician, right? 
you need to be unique. You will be something different from others. So that's the three factors you can judge if this is something you should put in the app. That is fantastic advice. And would you I mean, would you ever enter a competition again? I mean, you've literally you've you've hit the pinnacle when it comes yeah. to competitions. Is it something? Have you kind of moved on from that part of your life now, or or would you consider maybe, ever? Well, maybe not, because um, it's if if you think back, it's quite painful. It's like a long journey. <laughs> But I also put down my FISM app for a long, long time because after my FISM app, I developed many new things. Those are things I think even better than the app itself. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? So, but maybe one day, I don't know, maybe I will, I will reorganize my app again because now I, I have a lot of new technology, I mean, to make my app more pleasant to perform. Back then, I only build the whole thing myself and it looks ugly. It's something I don't even want to touch now. You know, even, you know, when you're performing, if your props are nicely packed, nicely designed, it, you feel good, right? If it's something that's almost going to break when you touch it, you feel scary, right? <laughs> yeah, so maybe one day I will reorganize everything, make it neat, nice. Maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe. Perfect, perfect. And and now, obviously, after FISM, uh, you, yep. you now are, you know, one of the top performers in the world. You know, I know that your company right. is highly <laughs> in demand. You do a lot of sort of bespoke acts, don't you? You, like, create something specifically for a client. Yeah. That must be, yeah. that must be very rewarding. Actually, not a lot, but I did that, but not a lot like like recent years i i kind of feel like performing my own thing rather than designing something for the clients if i'm doing something like designing some new things for a client it would be only be like maybe 25 percent of my ad mm -hmm. yeah you know i have a very funny theory about uh doing gigs or or, or stage show mm -hmm. like let's say that 100% is the act that you are doing. If you put in more than 25% of the new tricks, which you'd have never performed for real audience, you are going to, 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 to fuck up <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, because you, you're not familiar with the, the act itself. Even if you rehearse a lot of times, you don't know how they would react, right? So I can even if I'm designing something new for our, my clients, I will only it will only be like twenty five percent in my act. Like I take away something, I put it like I also will not put it at the beginning and the ending because you're going to <laughs> it's going to be bad if it it's like singing, right? Like at the beginning, oh, and then you you go off <laughs> the pitch and it it looks terrible. Mm -hmm. Even at the end. You off the beach, it looks terrible as well. But like in the middle, a little bit mistake, it's fine. So it's good to put the new thing in the middle. So you have first solid uh, opening, solid ending, and in the middle you can do something new, maybe. Yeah. So that's <laughs> funny theory. Yeah. Well, here's a question for you. Why did you start? I mean, obviously, you now spend a lot of time creating magic for magicians. And, yeah. uh, and your production company is is phenomenal. And we'll talk about that in a minute. What made you decide to go, I want to start creating magic for magicians. You know, you're a successful magician. You, you, right. you don't have to worry about getting gigs. People are coming to you. You've, you've done, you know, you've won FISM. Um, right. as, a, as a magician, your, your career is set. Right. What made you to decide to start creating? Actually, it was after FISM and I was doing a uh, lecture tour in China with my partner, yeah, back then. And that was the time I first told my partner, hey, if we have a good shell for Rubik's Cube, it would be crazy, yeah, something like that. And then we started making that and yeah, eventually it becomes a brand. 
And yeah, that's why the very first product we, we brought out is the Rubik's Dream with the large shell and, and a mini shell where you can do matching, which is actually part of my physical Really, I just do this and then match. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So Absolutely. that's how I started. Yeah. And, and before you, you started Henry Harriers Presents, you, you, right. you, had, you had another product, but your name was, op, was not on it, uh, you said earlier on. Right. Is that yeah. why you put everything out yourself? Because that wasn't a great experience for you? And, and so now, because most magicians, they kind of put products out through different companies. Right. It's easier to go, I'm going to go to Penguin Magic and they can make the prop for me. But you've gone down the route yeah. of, having your own in right. team and you produce everything yourself which yeah. is a very actually not not myself it's actually my partner my partner is called aaron uh, okay. aaron Singh. um because he's like the guy who organized my lecture tour mm -hmm. and we first know each other because of fism because after fism uh he was he was working for a magic company in china and he interviewed me about yeah this this something and then we started to know each other and we get very close and oh maybe we could do a lecture tour and then we do a lecture tour and then it slowly becomes like my like super close partner right now and oh. he's very good he 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 basically because he's he's from china he knows all the good resources to uh, manufacture maybe Maybe you know, like Turner Watch, right? You know Turner Watch. Yeah. Uh, he made it. Some of the Patrick Coons uh, project, he made. He's the guy who manufactured it, and many other projects as well. So yeah, he he's a really good uh, because he knows the good great resources in China. So yeah. That's so if good. anyone who have anything they want to publish or they want to manufacture. Aaron is a, for me, Aaron is the best person to find. <laughs> That's amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, let's talk about creativity because in the last few years, you bought out, uh, let's see if we can get these in order. Rubik's Dream, uh, then yeah. Rubik's Dream 360. Audi 360, yeah. Then the Audi Chocolate. Cube. Yep, yep. Cube to Chocolate. Cube to Chocolate. Yeah, and Audi Cube. Uh, I forgot. Venom Cube. And then, and then Audi Insta. Yeah, that's the order. Yeah. Okay. So here's a question. Two questions on this. One, have you got any advice on creating a magic trick? Like how do you, you, you have, and I've mm. spoke about this on the channel before, you've revolutionized the genre of cube magic. Before right. these days, I do not know one cube magician that doesn't <laughs> use your products. Like, Yes, it's, it's it. The whole thing has been revolutionized because of what you've done. So thank you. It's it's, it's true, and the quality is amazing. So yeah. how do you how do you get the idea? How do you get the inspiration? How does that process of creativity? How do you go from, you know, what well, I want to do this to actually then having a finished product? I think I think the point is that don't create magic because you want to sell it, that's totally wrong. My intention of creating magic is I want something that only I can do. Let's say back then I was thinking, ah, if I have a Rubik's Cube shell that looks so good that no others would think it's a shell, wow, I can do a lot. I can do a perfect matching. Back then in the lecture too, I fooled many people <laughs> because they don't even know there's a shell for cubes, right? And that's my intention. And I thought, oh, then someone makes us a cube. I can put it in the bag. I can even show it still mix up. And then it's so, wow, that's really strong, right? And my, my, my uh, philosophy of creating magic, I think um, for me, I don't create magic for magicians. I create magic for laymen. Like even my physical act, right? I, it, it fooled magicians, but it's also a good act for laymen. That's my basic line. I will not cross that line, right? Because my, 
I think magic, uh, uh, ultimately, it is for laymen, for me. If you can fool magicians, it's a bonus. Of course, in magic competition, it has to fool magicians, but in normal situations, I think if you could fool magicians, it's a bonus. But your true intention is to have a good piece of magic, right? So oh, what, what were we talking about? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about creativity and finding your inspiration. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. So Rubik's stream, because I feel like, oh, if I had, if I have this, I can do a lot more. There's a lot, a whole new world I could explore with just this. And that's how it started. And then the next thing, the Audi 360, I kind of have the idea. I, I, I still remember I draw it in, in my uh, iPhone of the idea how it could twist. Oh, then I think, wait. A shell that could twist. Damn. <laughs> and I feel like this must be something. And I creating, I try to think of how it could be used more practically because if it's two pieces in the back, it has sound and everything. Or maybe you could tap like this and then it could be super fast. I can start thinking about that. And then I said, oh, maybe I can put it underneath and I can show the back. That means it's almost same quality with Rubik's Stream. The way they could do, they could both show the back. And but this one, you could twist. And then that's why I feel like, oh, this is something we should do. And that's how we came up with the 360. And yeah, and everything is about experimenting. Like you have an idea and you keep trying. Yeah, you know, it, it looks, I know from my products, it looks very smooth, right? But we, we have came through a lot of troubles and problem solving. Yeah, so <laughs> very tough. So not easy at all. But one of the things that I get the feeling of, and I don't know, but I get the feeling that part yep. of the reason that you're creating these is because you want to do them yourself in your own act. Yes. It's not just about, I want to make this to, to offer it to magicians. You yeah. want to do it yourself. And then it yeah. happens to be something that other magicians would do as well. Yeah. And also because I'm a worker, I know what kind of magic I want to perform. If it's something that I didn't set my body like, like, like an Iron Man, like super heavy, just to do a coin vanish. No, I don't want to do that, right? For me, uh, my way to create magic is I, I judge about the trade-off. For example, um, cube to chocolate, let's say this mini cube to chocolate, What's the trade-off? I need to buy my M&Ms. I need to pack it like this. But I only, after that, I can perform it anytime. I just put it, put it in my pocket. Anytime I can have very good ending, then that's good magic because my, prepar my, my preparation is very low. Like the trade-off is very low. But the effect is like, you know, sometimes when, I, when you perform the cube of chocolate, they forgot everything you do. They only remember the chocolate. <laughs> and it's, to me, I, I, I kind of feel like, damn, that's not fair, <laughs> right? I do the, keep solving everything, but they only remember the, 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 the mini, mini chocolate, right? It's kind of like you do the one coin routine, blah, blah. And then finally it's a jumbo coin. They're like, wow, they only remember the jumbo coin. <laughs> and then they forget about everything. It's like to a point like that, so unfair. But anyway, that means it's a good piece of magic. So yeah. For example, Ven uh, Venom Cube, right? If you're doing Palo Show, perfect. You just bring these two things <laughs> to size like a two cubes and then you can do a matching, right? I don't want cubes to be able to load on my body, everything, no, no, no. This is one is simple, easy to pack, easy to do, and that's worker, that's practical. Who doesn't love practical things, right? That's my standard, but I think everyone have a different standard on how practical that is. But for me, I want it to super easy, super practical. Yeah. Fantastic, <laughs> absolutely fantastic. And I'm gonna put you on the spot. We're gonna talk about a new product in a bit, but oh, forget yeah. about that for a minute. Out of your right. entire cube range, which is your favorite? <sighs> it's so hard to pick. You know, every product feels like a sun from me, you know, it's like a real sun, you know, and they kind of um, feels like a different generation 
of me creating magic. Like, like I always imagine myself if I bring Venom Cube back to uh, back, like that goes back in time, and I show it to myself before FISA. I think I would like what the hell, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't even know I would create that, right? So, I I actually really love them all, but just sharing it's it's like a, I I do sacrifice sacrifice something like, you know, my intention of creating all these is to want myself, which want my magic to be unique, right? But now, once you publish it everyone would be doing like even um <laughs> like i still remember a few years back then when i performed venom cube i have a lot of passion doing that like wow i know this is going to be very good piece of magic right i have all the passion into the trick but once everyone is doing that i kind of lost the interest doing that you know so that's a good and bad but the good thing is, is I would keep looking forward and keep creating new things. And the sacrifice would be, ah, I kind of lost the interest to perform that. Right. <laughs> so I totally that's, 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 yeah, just kind of, I, I, I think you, you would feel the same, right? <laughs> when yeah. something is doing, someone, like the whole world is doing mini cube of chocolate, right? I even saw a mom doing this for her son. <laughs> so I and sometimes in, like some program in China, some layman performing the cubic chocolate, and yeah, it kind of feel like oh, it's like I don't want to do that again. <laughs> like mm. not, I, I mean, I don't want to perform it myself for some reason because everyone else is doing it already. I kind of feel like oh, I want something new, something else. That's why I have those kind of collector series thing that I showed you like before the interview. <laughs> it's something unique to yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyway. And I love the fact that all of your products interlink. Was that a conscious decision? Like I can I can build my Insta yeah. cube by the Insta onto my Venom cube. I can have that go into my uh, uh you know, Rubik's Dream shell, whatever yeah. it might be. Everything links together, which is so smart. So smart. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it kind of feels like Apple, right? <laughs> Everything are connected. And my first intention of creating you or like publishing the Audi cubes is that I want a cube that looks ordinary. You know, those speed cubes, they all look very strange to a layman. But of course, if you know cubing, you know those are the like smoothest cube in the world, right? I want a cube that looks ordinary to layman because you know the, the more ordinary the thing you're using the more magical feeling they could feel right so if they believe this is an ordinary cube and then you do the magic they feel like wow this is like real magic maybe i can maybe maybe it's something that he can do as well it's an ordinary cube it's a real magic right that's why audi cube to me is the best cube of course if you compare this with some super good cubing cubes uh the corner cutting may not be as good as that but it's good enough to do some of the moves i think you have seen many of my performance every time I'm using the audi cubes because i want to keep away uh, i can do it smoothly and it's something like you are using bicycle right of course there are like better brands that you will feel better for your fingers but bicycle is like the most standard one you can still fan it you can still dribble and it still it looks ordinary to layman, and I think it's very important to look ordinary for every prop you use. But of course, I think it depends on what kind of magicians you want to be. Because for me, my my point of view in magic is that if you're using something ordinary, at least it looks ordinary to them, and it's to them it would be real magic. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So let me ask you a question. You've dominated the cube, magic cube world. You've revolutionized the genre. And, yeah. then, you out, and then you bring out Magnet Zero. Where did that come right. from? You've, you've built up a reputation of, it, of a, a, a specialist company when it comes to cube magic. And then you bring yeah. out the trick. And I remember looking at it and thinking, 
wow, I didn't wow. expect this. And, you know, we gave it product of the year. It's absolutely amazing. I don't know one magician that yeah. doesn't love magic uh, magnet zero. Magnet zero, right. Where did, where, basically, where? Um, basically, I want people to know that I'm not just a cute magician. Actually, if you know about me, if you know me commercially, I never brand myself as a cute magician because to me, I think it's not my thing. I like people know me about my cute magic only because uh, my FISM act, right? Because of FISM. So I want people to know that I'm not a cute magician. I'm a magician who can do anything that is amazing. That's why in my uh, like commercial show, maybe only 25% would be cute magic. The rest are not cubes. Yeah. So, oh, what were we talking about again? <laughs> no, I found that fascinating. Magnet, Z Magnet Zero. Oh, Magnet Zero, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Sorry, yeah. I'm always like that. <laughs> cool. So Magnet Zero is something I, it's a long story. Long time ago, I got a version of balancing a coin on top of the cap and cover of a glass. I think some of some people in the cafe, they kind of search me, my videos performing that. That is like many years ago on, on a TV show. And that is like actually like my previous version of Magnet Zero. Maybe you could call it Magnet One because it used, it really used, I could say that maybe it really used magnets. It's like a principle I've experimented like before. And it works good, but you have to came very close to that object. Let me do this, right? That is like, okay, that's not bad, but it's not great. And we all know there's a version in, in, in China with a huge marker where you can <laughs> like electronics, so you can make the coin drop. And my friend, uh, Amendo Jen, or you could call him Amendo C, he had a really good routine with the big marker. Actually, if I really want to show people about his routine because, but the problem is that his English is not as good. So that's why I didn't really put it in the, in, in the tutorial. I really want people to, to, to watch that because he have a, like a built-in scripting and everything, jokes, and finally, the audience got to have footage of themselves performing the, the psychic power trick of themselves. And you, the magician, appeared in the video. And that's a really good um, souvenir for the spectator to keep a very good experience, to really take the trick to a really new level. But too bad, <laughs> because we can only talk about how he did it, but not like a full performance. So. Uh, yeah, talk about magic zero. So <laughs> we are keep, we keep thinking, oh, is it possible to make it smaller? What should we make it on? We thought of maybe a, a, a what's that called? Uh, lipsticks, yeah, yes. chapsticks, or deck of cards. We originally are trying to develop a version with the chapsticks, but later, I I I kind of had the idea, hey. Like many years ago, I've been using the, 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 the Sharpie cap. It may be a good idea because everywhere is Sharpie, right? Every magician has a Sharpie, right? Maybe sometimes you can find a Sharpie from maybe, I don't know, a desk on the desk or anywhere. And it feels like an ordinary object, right? Again, it's an ordinary object that makes it into real magic. And I kind of think, oh, if it's just a cap that is a gimmick, then it would be very easy to switch in and switch out. Back then I did try to think how I switch in and switch out yet. I just asked Aaron, wait, we need to develop this. At first Aaron said, no, it's so hard because the Sharpie cap is like super small. It's almost impossible to build such a small, put it in the, in the, in the Sharpie cap, right? That's why, you know, in China, every version is like a huge marker. But then he worked really hard and Eventually, we make a very small <laughs> version where you can fit in the Sharpie cap. And then I kind of um, see it at a worker uh, perspective because, you know, I'm going to use it, right? I want it to be super easy to use. So 
I need this to be able to turn it on in front of the audience. I don't want to do this and then stop. This is stupid. So that's why, you know, to activate that, you know, if you click the click, you click that clip, right? So you can put that part uh, within your performance. So every time you perform, you will remember which place you will turn it on. All right, that's worker. And then I told Aaron, I, I need a, it's okay to talk about secrets, right? Because this channel oh, is the only oh, reason, right? Watch this channel, yeah. Right. I want that thing to yeah. be easy to use. We need a time delay function. We need that. Because once you do that, you can be hands-free. And then you can, and you know, after seven seconds, it's going to work. So you can enjoy your showmanship, your acting, your real psychic power to move the coin. And that's the real fun part about Mega Zero because you know it's going to work. You know when it's going to drop. But you can do, you, that's a part where I always think, you know, like for magicians, we always practice crazy style of hands, crazy moves, like we prepare crazy props only for one thing, right? For, for you to have a moment that you feel like you have real psychic power. So in the trailer, that I, I said it, that's what I meant to say it, right? It's real because I really can enjoy the showmanship, enjoy the presentation of how I can use my psychic power to make it drop. And that's the fun part. And, and then I, I, we, I kind of discussed with Amanda, oh, we need a, a, we also need an instant drop function because sometimes maybe, Maybe it moves a little bit, but it did not drop. So you can add another phase to make it drop. So the instant drop button is very important as well. The instant drop button <laughs> for me is so important because I, I, I think yeah. I, you know, I do it with a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I do it with a mem deck. So, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I have somebody yes, yes. name a card. They that would be card crazy. And, and, and just before they get to their card, the thing drops and then they turn it over yeah. and it's on their card and it's... That would it would it would time. be it would be freaky like maybe you can present it like the coin kinds of have the memory of what you're thinking right <laughs> the delta of position the coin drops and there's a card they're gonna there's no way they could figure out how it's done it's crazy and um and then I I think okay so after the trick you switch out right I don't want to have a moment where I need to turn it off again if I need to do this that's stupid, right? Mm -hmm. And I kind of learned it from Sean Bogania. Is it his uh, dancing hanky thing, right? He got a really nice auto turn off function. And that's a good thing. So I tried to imply that into this trick and, and it works perfect. So every time I just, when I want to start a trick, I just do it and I can turn it on. After the trick, after the switch, I, I, I just, Throw it back into my pocket and I'm done. I don't have to worry about anything. So five minutes it will turn off itself. Great. So that's how we try to modify it into a worker point of view. You know, the big market thing, the old version, you need to plug it, open it, take the pieces in and plug it off, put it back, right? So that's so stupid. And then another thing is about the clip on the, I mean, I could say it, the remote, yeah. In, because I always feel like when you have a remote, you need to reach into your pocket and you click the button, right? I think that's not good because you need to find it, you need to fumble and find it. And then I try to think of a way, oh, maybe you can clip it at the edge of your pocket. So it's always the same position. So once your hand relaxed, you can touch everything. Oh, and also I want the seven second delays button to be super big. So once you click it, it's there. But another one would be super small but it's hot, so you can still feel it. Oh, it's right there, and then press. So very, some, yeah, very small details. This is not, not yeah, just the worker point of view of, yeah, creating magic, yeah. <laughs> it's so absolutely it. incredible, it really is. It's something that I think every worker is gonna be doing from now on because it just, like yeah. say, it's so organic. You all carry a, uh, everyone carries a Sharpie around with them anyway. So it's very, very simple right. to have something like this in your pocket and you're good to go anytime, anywhere. Yeah, but it's also a tough time for me because like a period like now, not many people have a live show, right? 
And I would admit that this thing is super strong when you perform it live. And if it's on video, it almost feels, <laughs> should I say stupid? No, but it's kind of feel like a small trick on, on video, but live, you feel the power because it's, it's real, right? So it's not something good for camera or for video, I think, for camera or video. Out of the Insta, it's something good for camera and life. So it's good for camera, it's a bonus. But Magna Zero, I kind of brand it as a worker series because it's really for work, right? But now we don't have work. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, ah, is it the right timing to put it out? Right, so if, if, as a creator, it feels strange because you know you're creating something for life and then, hey, the world doesn't have live shows anymore yet no, it kind of feels strange <laughs> but yeah. when all things go but, back when things go back to normal um I can, right because the other thing about this trick henry is i think that when we are allowed to go out and perform again social distancing is going to be a thing for a while and the yes. beautiful thing about this prop is you don't need to touch a spectator you don't need to go oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A spectator. you can literally you could even use right. your own coin if you wanted to. Here, let me just put this coin on right. here. Let's try and do this. Perfect social distancing trick. Actually, oh. this could be a really good presentation for the trick. <laughs> yeah. You can yeah. say, you know, it's as a magician, it's so really hard. Yeah, it's really hard to perform nowadays because you need to be social distancing. But we can use something else to achieve that. Very simple. You can touch something without even touching it. And they're like, what? <laughs> and they do that. I don't know. It could be a good piece of nature. Well, I think it'd be great. You know, magicians are looking for, they're currently working out ways of adapting their act to fit yeah. the distancing, ready for when the world opens up again. And I think this is, this is not just is it perfect, but also, like you say, presentationally, <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. Right. Yeah, I think that. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, Aaron told me, he said, uh, I think we cannot wait anymore because we cannot just keep waiting, right? Otherwise, everything stopped. And if you stop, it would be like like what I said, just sitting here doing nothing. And nothing will happen. You have to keep things rolling. So we still decided to like release it at this timing. Yeah. And, and has it been <clears throat> successful for you? Has it done well? Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's done well. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I'm good. so glad. I'm so glad. The reaction is really good. Which brings us <laughs> to this. Okay. Yeah. There is a huge buzz about. Now, yeah. I will openly tell you, and I mentioned this to you off camera, and I will say yeah. it again. After RD Insta came out, I said to myself, there is absolutely no way that Henry is going to come up with anything else with Rubik's Cubes. He's bought out Magnet Zero because that's it. He's moving on from cubes. He's literally got no other ideas. There's nothing else he can do. Short of floating a Rubik's Cube up in the air and making it explode in a it fireworks or something, we're done. And then you just go and prove me wrong by changing the game again. And I'm not using, I'm not saying that lightly. This right here is a game changer. It is a game changer. Now, this is going up. This is, you are officially releasing this at the end of March. Is that right? Yep, should be. Yeah. Can, can we can we talk about can we talk about the product? Would that be okay? Yes, of course. At the yes, moment, everyone's speculating, but no one knows what it is. So <laughs> let's 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 talk about it a little bit, if that's okay. Yeah. Where, where should we get started? <laughs> so it's a cube in bottle trick. It's like a very like. I think a plot where all magicians wanted to solve this uh, cube problem. And this is like my way to, to, to do that because I want a way where every time after the trick, you can instantly hand out that cube in the bottle. And the great thing about this version is that when you hand it out, there's no switches at this moment, no switches at all, just hand it to them. And that is genuinely an ordinary cube in an ordinary bottle because there's nothing they could find. 
maybe I could say it this way. There's no right. secret in there. This is what it is. And we also include several versions. We can, you could have it signed. You could have it uh, signed it yourself. You can write maybe your initials. You can let them sign it, or you can even sign your name on the glass and you hand it to them. And I think Cuban bottle is very strong. The reason is that um, it's not, of course, you can like kind of feel like visually push it in the bottle and hand it out. But I think the real strong part about this trick is that you give it away. When you give it away, first of all, one, every time it's like anchoring, every time they look at the glass with the, with the cube inside, they remember you, right? Because you were the one who do that, right? Yeah. So they remember the magician, right? Who does a trick. And it's also, this itself is a really good impossible souvenir to put on your shelf, on, 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 the, drawer, uh, on the table, your desk. And it's really strong. So every day they look at the bottle and they remember you, <laughs> right? And the great thing about that is when someone, um, like let's say they, they had a friend going to her home and they will saw that and they ask, hey, what is that? And your friend will help you to tell them, oh, I met a magician, Henry. Wow, that is crazy. He kind of visually pushed the cube into this bottle and there's no way you can take it out. And you give it to me as a souvenir. He helped you to spread the story. So this is a real strong part about Cuban bottle. It's not about the trick itself. It's about what happens after that. And if, if you can create uh, or like uh, develop a good presentation, maybe, I don't know, maybe with something about motivational or like a, have a very good meaningful thing about this trick, it could be life-changing. It could be something very meaningful to that person. So, yeah. But of course, I did not taught any, I, I did not teach anything about presentation in the tutorial because I want people to try to came up with the own meaning of this, right? You know, you have seen many magicians, they could, for example, you know, uh, Michael Murray's uh, The Solution, you know, is very good for motivational presentation. and then when you give away the cue, that thing to that person is something very important to him. And he will remember, oh, I remember. I don't know the meaning, whatever. But anyway, every time they saw the cue, remember what you talked about or your talk or anything. So this is same. Maybe you can do finish the solution and then you say, I'm going to give it to you as soon as you. But I want you to remember this is something truly impossible tonight happening. So. I have something else, you introduce a glass and then you perform the trick. And then I think that guy, he will just remember this entire life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if you know this about me, but I do a lot of motivational speaking. And I yeah, I know. Events. And this, I, that's what I was thinking of. We never spoke about this before, but that's what I was thinking of. Right. I use a cube in my, uh, in, my, in my keynote speech. And this just writes itself, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people, they, they fail. And one of the reasons they fail is they look at the situations they get into and they right. think it's impossible. It's impossible. And because people look at something and say it's impossible, it means that they never try. Well, let me tell you right now, anything is impossible. Let me give you an example. It, it just right. write itself. It's just brilliant. Yeah. And for this, it could be at the first place, you think it's impossible to put in. But you think more that it's a way because cubes are made by small pieces. You could break all the pieces and build it back inside the jar. And then you could even explain it to them. And that's yeah. how you do it. And then they were like, wow. <laughs> it's like motivational, meaningful thing. Absolutely. And one of the things that people need to know about this and, and, and one of the things that I find so wonderful about this is yeah. you've solved for me the problem with regards to putting the cube inside the bottle, because every single time I've ever seen something like this, it's always done with misdirection. The bottle's been put away or the, the, whatever right. it may be. Right. But with this, yeah. 
the bottle goes in the bag, the cube goes in the bag. Goes in the bag. They can feel it, and boom, yep. they feel it going into the in into the into the bottle. Yeah. And then you open it up and you give it them. You never before have I seen the emphasis put on the actual penetration, but you can actually yeah. emphasize the tactile feel and the look of that cube going in the bottle, which is the most amazing thing of this version for me. I think that's absolutely amazing. Right. So good. Right. And they're kind of creating the, the image themselves in their brain because it's covered. It's kind of like you cover it with a cloth and like you finish something, they kind of like, wow. They kind of create how it finishes themselves. So sometimes, you know, visual magic is like very popular now, right? like you want visual finish, gone or whatever. But sometimes when you cover it with a cloth, you have some suspense, you know, we are like the old, old school style. <laughs> yeah. So maybe in, in another point of view, it's, it's actually good to have a back. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and you've made and it also makes it very practical because all you need to bring, if you are just doing the Cuban bottle, the trick itself, all you need to bring is a bag. There's nothing else. You don't need a table. Uh, what else you need? You don't need anything. Just a bag. That's it. That's everything you need is in a bag. Right. And what a <laughs> great finale to a cube routine. What a great finale. Yes. What an amazing finale. Um, I tell you where I'm planning on using this. I do a lot of weddings. Okay. I do a lot of weddings. Ooh. And for me, right. the bride and groom, oh my gosh, I'm going to be doing my cube thing and I'm going to finish off with this on the head table with the bride and groom. Yeah. Uh, probably have a custom sticker with my details in saying happy, you know, I, you know, right. congratulations that I can just pop on, this, on the thing afterwards and I'm just going to give it them. And I know that bride and groom are going to keep that forever and they're going to talk about it and they're going to tell everyone about it. Um, yeah. Talk about a, a giveaway. And and you've actually priced replacements, not replacements, but... Uh, you, yeah, like a refills. Yeah, you've, you've priced... Oh, you're refills. talking about that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That? That'd be okay, of course. We should be priced around 10 to 12 US dollars for the bottle. So you can give away every time because we really want to encourage people to really give it away. This trick is totally meaningless if you're just doing this and not give away, <laughs> right? Because think about this, it's your cube, it's your bottle. You put your cube into your bottle, so what, right? It's the, the most amazing moment is that you can give it away. That moment, like I always emphasize in cube magic, when you give away the cube, it proves that your cube is ordinary. Of course, for other cubes, it, it already looks ordinary, but if you have a really strong cube trick and then you give away, then they, you, they, in their mind, they're like saying, oh, wow, that's really an ordinary cube. I can keep it, right? Now, even better, because you're not just giving away the cube, you are doing something more so they could uh, have it nicely sit on the desk, something like that. So, yeah, I really love giving away souvenirs uh, in magic, like anniversary rewards. I think, you know, we're workers, we know anniversary rewards is like one of the best trick in the world, right? Yeah. To give away. It's so strong. Anyway, so yeah, I love giving away impossible objects. So, this is something similar to that but more like a, a, a larger size version like a parlor trick something like that yeah yeah it's it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant um <laughs> and when it's going to be hopefully available by the end of march do yep. you, should be should be roughly do you have a price point on how much it's going to be yes it should be same to uh venom cube should be Oh, if it's not same, should be similar to, to the price of Venom Cube and yeah, Rubik's Stream and 360. Because I think this is something, um, this is actually, although I, I, I put it in the Cube series, but you know, it's something, it's something work for workers, right? Because you're going to give away. And when you give away, maybe only workers would love to give away. I don't know, maybe, yeah. So it's and something for workers. It's a That's why it's not going to be, yeah, it's not going to be very low price. Well, the, but, it, 
But I, I think when everyone, when they open the box, I think they're going to freak out. <laughs> because, you know, the first time when Aaron sent me the prototype, I'm like, wow, damn, that looks crazy. Anyway, I don't want to spoil anything, but it's so good. The quality is just crazy. Yeah. And, and it's a cliche, but you don't even need to be able to solve a cube to be able to do this. Like you don't need to, you don't do cube yeah. magic and you don't plan on doing cube magic. This yeah. is still an incredibly impossible penetration of an object that right. everybody knows into another impossible right. object that you can give away. You don't just need to, if you're not a cube magician and there are people out there that aren't cube magicians, this is so something yeah. that fits into anyone's act. Yeah, because the basic version is you only bring a bag and you say inside the bag, there's two objects. There's a cube and then you hit the bag, clang, clang, clang. There's another hot object, which is a glass, empty glass. And then you hold this and you, you can sell it. Like this is like the world's greatest puzzle. What's this? And then it goes in, hand it to them and you're done. You don't need to know anything about cube magic. Yeah. And the reason is simple, but yeah, maybe we're not going to talk about that, but you know why it's simple, right? <laughs> because it's not about cubings or not about slide of hand. You just, it's so simple to perform. Actually, I, I always think that, is that my thing? Every trick that I perform, I mean, I create it, it's very easy. <laughs> but that's a good thing for me. I, I want things to be simplified. It, if, if the outcome, the effect would be the same to the audience, to layman, layman point of view, the effect is the same. I would rather use a more simpler way uh, and a more direct and more workable way rather than a very complex way. Yeah, because you have more room for presentation and everything. Right? If I have to worry about, oh, maybe I need to set it here, I need to set it here, I need to set everything right there, uh, I need to, Oh, be careful of this, be careful of that, be careful of dropping this. No, it's super simple. Just do it and then you can focus more on your presentation. And that's a good thing for magicians, I think. But that comes back to the fact that a lot of the stuff you create, you create it because you have a desire to perform it yourself. Yes. Absolutely. This, this trick, again, is a bit like, I, I feel a bit strange about this because I I already performed it in, in 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 quite a few gigs and but the problem is I don't have a chance to film a good performance of that because most most of them are private. Some of them are, are like the richest people in Hong Kong. I cannot film it, right? I need to I even need to sign a contract that I cannot tell people who I'm performing for. And I I don't have a good footage of performing it on stage because and again same thing. It's something, of course, you can do it close up because the craftsmanship is so good, you can do it close up. But I think it's best to perform it on parlor because like a lot of audience will be here, right? So it's again, something for life, best for live performance. And it's like a struggle whether I should release it right now or wait for a longer time. But again, and we decided to release at this moment. Originally, it should be came out the same timing with Magnet Zero, but we kind of feel that like the market is not quite ready. So we wait, wait, and now maybe around the timing, we are going to do that. Well, things seem to be starting yeah. to open up a little bit. So you know, yeah, I think you're right. I, think. I hope, Yeah, but I, I, I kind of have a, not a very special presentation, but I do have a presentation that this could be very good for um, Zoom shows, right? Let's say you have the audience right there, you're doing a Zoom show, and maybe you have done something amazing with the cubes, and then you said, this cube you might think is maybe a trick or anything. So I'm going to actually ship this cube to you. But before I give it to you, before I ship it to you, I will do something amazing with this. So remember this moment. So I have a glass and then I do this. And now it's generally penetrated inside the glass. And because you can ask them to name anything, just like maybe name a number, I don't know, something to prove it's the same group. And then you can say this, I'm going to ship it to you and I can sign my name. So this is a souvenir for you. 
so it kind of feels like they experience the process or how we penetrate it. And then you still be able to really give it away to your clients, I don't know, or your audience. So it still kind of proved the trick. It's really ordinary. It's something organic. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a presentation for students. So you already tell them, I'm going to ship it to you, but I'll add something more to this. So you remember this. So yeah. I love the idea. I love the idea. That's great. That's amazing. Yeah. So here's a question for you before we start wrapping everything up. What's next? Yeah. I know that you're probably going to be working on a million other things. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I said to you off camera, uh, surely <laughs> you're done with Cube Magic now. And then you proceeded to show me that you're nowhere near done with Cube Magic. Yeah. Um, can you give us a sneak peek of some of the stuff that you're working on over the next 12 months? Uh, you don't have to actually well, show anything, just something that, right. you, you know, if there's anything you can say. Yeah, we are actually, actually, you know, we started a new line. We call the Worker Series, which, because of, again, we want people to know that I'm not just a, a cube magician. I have other tricks. If people have attended my lecture, they know I have many great tricks. Cast Across, I have a Mystery Card Box, many things that you, maybe you have never seen, but... Um, for the next few months, we after the Cuban bottle, we should have a new booklet from a great Russia master. Maybe, maybe right now I will not mention his name, but I can introduce a little bit. This guy, this master, he started cubing first, so he's really good at cubings, and then he went into magic. So the method he is using for his cube magic is super revolutionary. It's like no magicians in the world could know how it's done because he's using techniques from the cubing side. So yeah, it's something we all really looking forward to. And we already finished the book it's a thin book like that it has like three or four tricks but all of them are really great should i mention some of the tricks maybe 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 one of them is really it's a really great impromptu matching effect um where you have two cubes you have one mix up one solved and then you hand it to your spectator and you said i want you to mix up the soft one. But when you mix up, I would try to memorize every step you mix. But to do that, I need some muscle memory. So I would do the same thing with the mix up cube I have in my hand. So you do every move, I do this, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. So after the many mixes, and it's that uh, now, um, because we have this cube already mixed. So after this, these two cubes will not match, right? But I already memorized all the steps you have done. And then you say, I'm going to turn my back. You are going to hand me one of them. So they hand me any one of them. And I put it behind my back. And I, it feels like I'm rewinding all the steps. And I do this, do this. And then, yeah, it's done. And then the two cubes really matches. Like wow. no switches. This trick is just done by two ordinary cubes. And again, this trick utilizes um, like some principle that I don't think any magician would be able to create because it's like the principles from cubing. So it's really crazily deceptive. And it, you would look like a, like a memory master. But the truth, no, super simple. <laughs> yeah. Just one of the trick. Amazing. Yeah. That sounds amazing. And yeah. Are there other things coming in the worker series as well down the line? Are you going to be developing other routines? Yeah, we actually will publish some more magic creations from magicians from Asia because we, you know, there are many great magicians from Asia, but not many people uh, from the other side would know. So in the future, we will present for them. Uh, like more creations from, yeah, other Asian magicians. 
but of course I maybe I cannot mention what tricks would there be, but we are planning a lot of different projects from other magicians. Yeah. Awesome. So that's basically something that should be happening this year, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, awesome. that's it. And I know that you have other cube related products uh that yes. you're in development with at the moment. Um yeah. I have uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you should. I, I, you know, obviously, you don't have to say anything now. But you've some of the some of the things that you were showing me before the interview started just blew my yeah. mind. Like it just says to me that you've literally only yeah. just scratched the surface when it comes to cube magic. And right, so those are the things. Uh, maybe in maybe in the future we would publish it as a like a collector series because. It's something modified it from what I have already. It's like a special version of what I have. And so, yeah, it's like a collector series. But of course, you can still use it to perform. It's something that would be crazy. Should we show it, actually? Um, I, I would maybe, yeah. That. <laughs> I would love you to, but I don't want you to. Tip yeah, maybe, maybe not yet. Maybe not yet. Yeah. I sometimes, I actually sometimes I perform that on my, uh, like, maybe Instagram live. <laughs> so if people have been following me, they may have seen it already. You know, that thing is really good for Instagram or, or Zoom shows because the impact is much stronger than just an ordinary cube. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what Henry is alluding to here is one of the most incredible versions of something he's already doing uh, I, think <laughs> right. would, I think it would make an unbelievable closer um yeah for a show that you could even do as an encore piece after something like the cube right. bottle you could do your whole cue back do the cube and bottle and then say actually let's try one <laughs> yeah, more you could. and it would it, it from the audience's point of view the 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 difficulty level is just exponentially larger so yeah 10 times yeah so yeah. I'm very excited to see that stuff come out. So I know that you've got a lot in development. Right, right. Before we wrap all this up, one last question, Henry, and this is a question that I ask everybody. Outside okay. of Cube Magic and uh, your your production company, what's next? What, uh, do you, are there any magical goals that you want to hit that you haven't hit yet? Because let's be honest with you. Right. Your legacy, Henry, is set. I mean, you have done so much <laughs> for Korea. You know, uh, from, you know, you, you like you just said, you performed to some of the biggest and best clients in the whole of Hong Kong. Uh, right. You are literally in demand all year round. You, 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 you you've done, a, you know, you've won FISM for God's sake. I mean, you've done so right. Is there anything left that you want to do uh, or? Right. I have to be honest. I am a person that, I don't really have a very fixed plan, you know. I don't even know what will happen next year. Like, we don't even know why, what will happen this year, right? So, I, for, like, of course, like, I will keep having new products, new creations. But, to be honest, I don't really have a plan. But that's, that could be a great thing, because... Uh, it's my style because I I don't have a plan, but I make sure every steps I'm walking is a good step. You, you get what I mean, right? Yeah. It's a surefire winning step. So it's like I care about every step I'm walking now more than what I would do in 10 years. It could be good, it could be bad, but anyway, it's like just my style. So to be honest, I don't have a lot of plans. And another thing that I, to be honest, we, for me, I think a lot of magicians are saying, we all feel a bit lost in this period. And for me, it's true. I kind of feel like, you know, as a magician, the only purpose being a magician is to perform. And if now I have much less chance to perform, it's like I lost my soul, you know. You know, last time I performed like a, a formal show, it, it's like, uh, December 31st, the last day of last year. <laughs> so we don't have, a, me, I don't have a lot of chance to perform. And it's a big problem for me. And I feel kind of, I feel strange. 
And yeah. something it's it's a similar feeling of of um like what I said, I create we, we produce a metal zero or even keeping bottle. It's something I think is best for live shows, but yeah, it kind of feels strange. So I actually have some maybe if you don't mind could share is some new insights. Yeah. You know, I, right now, the only chance I could perform it sometimes, like recently I could go to bars, I meet some new friends and I perform my magic. That's a place where I could still maybe a little chance to perform magic. So uh, I kind of like focus back more shifting from professional uh, gigs to like, oh, maybe I should take my casual performing more seriously, like I did 10 years ago. Because when I go, when I become a professional magician, this is like my reflection these days. I had a big problem because I only have the energy when I do the makeup, when I look good, when I look, have good clothes, when I'm on stage, I'm like shining, right? But when I go down the stage, like without all this, I feel tired, <laughs> I feel uh, lazy. That could be a big problem for me, I think. So I want to be more, maybe I should uh, focus more, even when I'm not performing. Uh, I need to have a healthy body. I need to sleep early and eat healthy. <laughs> Of course, now I'm only like 20% of my goal, but anyway, <laughs> but yeah, this is the direction I think I, it's like a few days ago. This is my reflection a few days ago. I think this is where I should focus because I feel like when I'm performing at the bar, it's not as good as when I'm on stage. So I keep thinking why? And I, that's the reason because I only feel the energy when I'm on stage or when I'm, I look like a magician. So maybe I should be like focused even more, even when I'm casually performing, I need to put my heart into that. I don't, I, I shouldn't be feel like, oh, I just want to check and I yeah, go away. No, I should, every single performance, even just a casual one, I should put all my effort and make sure it's the best performance. So yeah, that's my reflection recent days, but yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. I think that magicians all over the world are struggling at the moment. And yeah, I think they need to do what they can to yeah. recapture that feat. Like that's why I set up this YouTube channel. Because yeah, it allows yeah, yeah. me to it keeps you yeah, in good condition. Yeah. And 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 constantly yeah. thinking about magic and practicing and performing it. Uh yeah, I'm doing it to a camera, but at least. I feel like I'm doing yeah. something. Right? You're moving and you're doing something solid, right? So, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree, Henry. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hopefully, I'm a fairly positive, optimistic person. So, um, right. yeah, I'm 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 hoping that at some point in the very not too distant future. We can all go out and perform. And you know what? I've, I've spoken to several magicians and, and I think that when, when things are back to normal, whenever that may be, whether it be a month, yeah. six months, a year, whenever it be, I think that uh, we're going to experience the golden age of magic because everybody is going to want entertainment. Right. People have been right. stuck doing entertainment for so long. I think that uh, uh, we're going to experience a golden age at some point and it's going to right. Come yeah, back. we should look, look look forward to that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But in the meantime, it has been an absolute honor having you on the channel, Henry. You are uh, thank you so much, <laughs> and an inspiration to so many magicians. And you know, there wouldn't be anywhere near as much cube magic going on around the world if it wasn't for you. So thank you so much. And whatever you thank can you. <laughs> to work out, whether it be the worker series, the cube series, the collector series. Right. I will be the first person in line to buy whatever <laughs> it is that you've got. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Thank you. So it much. means a lot to me. Yeah. Before you go, where can people find you? So if they want to order your products directly, what's the website? I'll yeah. put it in the link. I'll put it on the screen below and I'll put it in the description. Yeah, it's xpresents.com. Perfect. Just that. And you've got a very yeah. vibrant Facebook group as well, haven't you? Where people share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
the Facebook group is the Henry Harris Presents, but that is more for people who already got the products. So yeah, and then they could join the group and discuss any crazy ideas about products. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. And of so course, that... if, if anyone have any problem, they could find me on Facebook and that's the best way. Maybe Facebook is the best way to find me. Easiest way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And you mentioned that you've been sharing things on Instagram. What's your Instagram handle, handle Henry? It's Henry Harrius. That's it. Nice and yeah. easy. Nice and easy. Wonderful. Yeah. Henry, thank you again one more time. Guys, if you haven't got Henry's products, go out and buy everything you've got. He is a real worker and one of the nicest people in magic. And you are. Henry, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> guys make sure that uh you leave a comment down below i'm sure henry will see it and uh do me a favor subscribe to the channel like the video leave a comment and i'll be back tomorrow with another video i'll see you then thanks very much for watching take care bye everybody